Okay, chapter 8. In those days the multitude, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. Um, and if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, broke them, gave thanks to Father Jehovah and the Holy Spirit, uh, broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before them, and they set them before the multitude. They also had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said to um, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away immediately. They got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Damanutha, and again uh, Jesus being God incarnate, did these kind of miracles to show that he was the creator over the created things of this universe or any other universe or realm um, by taking next to nothing or nothing and making it into something. Then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Assuredly, I say to you, no shine shall be given to this generation. And he left them and getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes do you not see? And having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. Sorry. Also, when I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, Seven. So he said to them, How is it you do not understand? Um... Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on them, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into town nor tell anyone in the town. This healing is unique in that it is accomplished in stages. Um, now confess Jesus and his disciples. Now Jesus and his disciples went out to the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and on the road he asked his disciples, what, saying to them, What do men say that I am? So they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. He said to them, But what do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. Then he strictly warned them that they should not tell, should tell no one about him. 
and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of Father Jehovah and the Holy Spirit, but the things of men. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whatever, whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of whom of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father Jehovah with the holy angels. Um, let me see what the notes are on this. Um, I don't see... Uh, well, I do see notes, but it says to go to like Luke at the end of Luke. Um, but we'll just keep reading. Chapter 9. Okay, chapter 9. And he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. Present with power, the transfiguration is what Jesus was talking about. A visible experience of kingdom power observed six days later by three disciples was a foretaste of both the resurrection and second coming of Jesus. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. And a cloud came and overshadowed them, and a voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Father Jehovah spoke. Suddenly, when they had looked around, they saw no one any more, but only Jesus with themselves. Now, as they came down from the mountain, he commanded them that they should tell no one the things they had seen till the Son of Man had been risen from the dead. So they kept this word to themselves, questioning what the rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, saying, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Then he answered, and told them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and restores all things, and how it is written concerning the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be treated with contempt. And how is it written concerning the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I say to you that Elijah has also come, and they did it. They did to him whatever they wished, as it is written of him. And he was, of course, referring to uh, John the Baptist. And when he came to, and when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately, when he saw, when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him. And he asked the scribes, "What are you discussing with them?" Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the time stamp. I should be doing this with my glasses. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long should I be with you? For 
How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him immediately, the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, if Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the, chi the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the clean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he came into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind cannot, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Um, and the note on it is, Some demons are stronger than others, and we must adequately prepare to engage in spiritual battle. Um, then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise the third day. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then he came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What is it you disputed among yourselves? on the road, but they kept silent, for on the road they had disputed amongst among themselves who would be the greatest. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but Father Jehovah who sent me. Um, um, and the notation on this. Jesus wants his disciples to confess their petty discussion, even though he already knows the answer to his question. Uh, Jesus effectively illustrates the lesson he had just taught to render service even to those whom the world regards as insignificant in the name of Jesus for his sake is actually to render the service to Jesus. And... Uh, I also want to talk about like this uh, demon thing for just a little bit. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and God over your heart and life, you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you cannot become demon-possessed. I just want you all to know that. Um, now, I'm going to stop in a little bit because um, I can only record like 15 minutes at a time. But not at this moment. Now John answered him saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name and we forbade him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him for no one works a miracle in my name uh, can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, assuredly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. And I will stop uh, at that moment. Uh,